On today's show, Audi uses fear of Tesla to motivate its employees, Waymo launches a public self-driving car trial in Phoenix, Arizona, and the Nissan Leaf that's driving all the way from the UK all the way to Mongolia. No, seriously. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's brand new Eco News Roundup show brought to you by New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned, we're serious about clean, green, renewable energy. Have you switched? Head to ecotricity.co.nz to join today. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener cars. As always, thanks for joining me. As recently as a year ago, luxury German brands like BMW, Daimler and Audi were playing it cool, telling anyone who would listen that they were far from scared of upstart Tesla and its range of superfast all-electric cars. But in recent weeks, Daimler, Audi and Porsche have all admitted that Tesla is a major threat to their established market share. And this week, we learned that BMW is actually leveraging fear of Tesla among its employees to encourage them to do everything they possibly can to help BMW catch up with Tesla's electric lead. As Elizabeth Berman of Bloomberg reports, BMW has been holding regular pep rally slash horror film showings, complete with images of rival luxury cars and Elon Musk. The message? That the auto industry is at the midst of an electric assault, which must be taken very seriously, and that BMW needs to do everything it possibly can to develop electric vehicles which are better than Tesla's. If you've ever spent any time looking into the world of concept cars, you'll probably be familiar with this weird and wacky cars coming out of Swiss design house Rinspeed. From the underwater scuba to the beach-friendly bamboo, Rinspeed's concept cars are essentially production cars that have been stripped down to their bare chassis and then rebuilt in order to showcase various future car technologies. And the Rinspeed Buddy is one such vehicle, fully autonomous and with a built-in periscope-like camera on the roof for better visibility of the road ahead, this all-electric concept is actually a heavily modified BMW i3. And this weekend, it's going to be on display at the MTA Centenary Car Show of the Century in Wellington. It runs from Saturday 29th of April through Sunday 30th of April, so if you're watching this video as soon as it's published, you've still got a chance to spy it, if you're quick. While most of us will likely stay buying plug-in cars for some time, Alphabet's self-driving arm Waymo has just launched a new program in Phoenix, Arizona, which not only previews the day when we may not be owning our own cars, but also not driving them. The first ever public trial of its fully autonomous vehicle program, Waymo is inviting residents in the greater Phoenix metro area, including towns like Gilbert, Chandler, Tempe and Mesa, to sign up to become early riders in its autonomous vehicle program. Sadly, it's not coming to New Zealand yet. But hey, we can hope, right? Back to Tesla now with four quick updates regarding Model 3. At the start of this week, Tesla announced it would be doubling the number of supercharger stations around the world in preparation for Model 3 launch, expanding existing sites and building new ones, and with some sites primed to get several dozen stalls each. It's been met with applause from most Tesla owners, but Roadster owners are bugging Tesla not to leave them behind as they still have to rely on the old 80 amp 240 volt Tesla charge stations that are becoming increasingly rare. Along with expanding its supercharger network, Tesla says sales and service will grow too, and it's just made the training and approval process to become an authorized Tesla repair center cheaper and quicker, something which should help eliminate the backlog of Tesla owners who found themselves waiting weeks for accident repairs. Finally, Tesla has taken delivery of the first batch of Model 3 destined robotic production equipment and has also smoothed out threats of industrial action at the recently acquired Grohmann Engineering in Germany, where a lot of the Tesla Model 3 production equipment will be made. And it's done that by offering the 700 or so employees there a substantial pay rise. Essentially, Tesla is oiling the wheels to make sure everything goes according to plan when Model 3 launches later this year, something that absolutely must go without a hitch. All I can say is that I'm glad I don't work at Tesla right now, because I'm sure there's a little more stress than I would like there. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and in this case, Tesla should be very flattered indeed, because Audi has just opened up reservations in Norway for the e-tron Kratro electric SUV, long before it's even produced official pricing. To join the queue to buy one, customers have to put down 20,000 kroner, that's just under 3,000 US dollars, and then wait until next year for the car to actually enter production. Yes, this is very Tesla, right down to the not announcing final specifications or pricing, 
But actually, while people think of Tesla as pioneering that technique, I want to remind everyone that Nissan and Chevy both offered online reservations way back in 2010 for the Nissan Leaf and Chevy Volt. So maybe it's just an EV thing. On this show, you'll know I cover anything that's cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter. And while this next story certainly ticks two of those boxes, I'm not sure about the other two, because this is the Flyer, a flying vehicle that's a cross between a water ski, a hoverboard, and well, a quad bike. Powered by an all-electric drive system, this one-seat propeller-driven flying bike is the first vehicle to come from Kitty Hawk, a startup backed by Google's Larry Page that's just come out of stealth mode. Eventually, the company wants to build a fully working flying car, but for now, it'll sell you the flyer from the end of this year. It looks fun to fly, and I'm not sure about the learning curve, but as to its safety, well, if you've ever crashed a drone, I think you'll get my concerns. Still, it's pretty cool, and I still want to have a go. What about you? From cars now to how they're powered, or rather how they're not powered. You see, last Friday, for the first time since the Industrial Revolution, not a single piece of coal was used to power the UK for an entire 24-hour period. Over the past few years, burning coal for electricity generation has dramatically dwindled in my home country. Replaced by cleaner, although still emissions producing natural gas, increased renewable energy generation, and unfortunately increased nuclear power. While it's a good shift towards cleaner power, the UK, like the rest of the world, needs to make sure that it doesn't replace coal-powered electricity with other fossil-fueled electricity or nuclear power. One simple way of making that happen? Well, sign up to join New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. That's us, if you didn't know. Back in the noughties, before cars like the Nissan Leaf even came to market, BMW's Mini brand produced limited numbers of the Mini E, a two-seat, all-electric conversion of the Mini Cooper. But despite this, BMW hasn't yet produced a production electric Mini that you can buy. And while late last year Mini confirmed an all-electric production model was coming, in addition to the recently launched Mini Countryman plug-in hybrid, some question remained as to what an all-electric Mini would be like and what its position would be in the company. Well, this week, we've heard confirmation that Mini bosses want the all-electric Mini to be one of its brand superheroes, a mainstream model that not only represents the brand as a whole, but entices new customers in. Something that's not a compliance car, but rather a fully-fledged, well-engineered, high-performance electric Mini that will sell just as well as the rest of the range. Sadly, there are no more details at present, but I, for one, can't wait to see what this model will turn out like. And finally, if you've ever spent any time with a Nissan Leaf, you'll know it's a very competent electric car, which, with some help from decent DC quick charging networks, can be used to make some pretty successful long distance trips along major routes, if you've got the charging infrastructure. But the guys at Plug-in Adventures are about to do something completely different with a lightly modified Nissan Leaf take part in the 10,000 mile Mongol rally from the UK to Mongolia. With the rear seat stripped out, the suspension raised, a special adventure light bar, a heavy duty roof rack, and the car wearing some chunkier rally tires and wheels, the Leaf dubbed ATEV will be tackling some of the toughest rally conditions possible on this endurance event, just to prove that electric vehicle travel is only as difficult as you make it. Good luck guys, and here's to a successful competition completion. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. And until next time, hug a tree. Bye.